if you win your conference championship and make it to the final four, a lot of times the smoke will come looking for you. Not a problem for Kevin Keats. He wants all the smoke. You are locked on Wolfpack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Wolfpack Nation? It's time to get locked in with Locked On. Thanks for making Locked On Wolfpack your first listen each and every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms, as always, apply. Happy Thursday to all. As always, I'm Grayson Boone. Joined by former Wolfpack defensive tackle Kenton Gibbs. More NC State basketball scheduling news came across our desk on Wednesday. The ACC-SEC challenge for the upcoming 2024-2025 basketball season was announced. And NC State has quite a formidable opponent in this year's challenge. They welcome the Texas Longhorns to Raleigh. So not only do we play Texas in this challenge, but Texas is coming to PNC arena how big of a deal is this to pen another massive non-conference opponent early in this season you say that coach keith saying duck and smoke i disagree he's searching for smoke he's yeah. looking for the smoke like a tourist in amsterdam he's looking for the smoke like a a, a cali trans transplant okay this man is he is all over the place in terms of seeking out the biggest the best and the brightest to start this season off and he's playing in the toughest conference in basketball. I don't give a damn what nobody say. I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it right here, right now. He's playing. He his team is already in the toughest conference there is, the most successful conference there is every year in the ACC tournament or in the NCAA tournament. Rather, my words are beating me up today, but I'm finding it the toughest conference there is in terms of who wins when the NCAA tournament comes around. He's already playing in that. And he's seeking out extremely difficult games. Seeking out high-level games to start off with. He's going with the old Tom Izzo method of we're going to find every difficult team. Throw them at us back to back to back. You know what? You've been loyal. Here's two more for you. That's how he wants his tough game stacked up. And I'll tell you, in the words of one Metro Boomin, them boys up to something. Them boys up to something. Because I don't know of a single coach that would put his team in an absolute gauntlet like what NC State's early schedule, early season schedule looks like. If you think we're not ready, if you think eh, we're teetering, if you think eh, we could get exposed, we could get dominated, this could get ugly early. I don't know of a single coach that would put a team together at, on the fly and put this team in that situation because you run the risk of immediately destroying their confidence. You run the risk of immediately, you know, um, if you if any of you have ever seen the Wiz, Richard Pryor waking up out of the bed saying, Hey, I'm a fraud, you got me. That is is what you put yourself at risk of doing here if you don't come out of this first portion of the season successfully, at least looking competitive against these excellent teams that are lined up. I won't smoke with the Longhorns, I won't smoke with everybody in Maui. I want all the smoke. Obviously, in context of the smoke, so now. You do have Texas coming to town in December. We're already scheduled to go out to Lawrence, Kansas, and play the Jayhawks in a very exciting non-conference road game. And then we also have the mini tournament out in San Diego, where you're paired up with three of the P5 schools that you lost to last year, Purdue in the Final Four. Uh, we had BYU, I think that was out in Vegas, and then we played down in Old Miss last year for last year's iteration of the ACC-SEC tournament. A lot of folks after this magical run for NC State basketball, the question that people are stuck on is, okay, well, Keats just pulled off a very magical run. He reconstructed the roster. Was that run a fluke? We're going to find out extremely quickly into this 2024-2025 season because the allegations are going to have to be addressed, I mean, as soon as like mid-December because you yeah. have to play at least four highly quality teams all in the non-conference by mid-December. Speaking to the point that you just made there, Kenton, that tells me one of two things. One, Keats is looking at the construction of his roster, and he is already extremely confident 
in what he has brought in, which he should be. Coming off of a run like that and you immediately capitalize on transfer portal guys, you should feel very confident. But bringing in these level of opponents so early in the season, I mean, you got to have it like right off of the bat. Because if not, you're going to learn very quickly what you need to improve on for the rest of the season. Because all four of these opponents that we're going to have to face, they will humble you quicker than you can believe if your team is not ready to go so early in the season. I love these early tests for NC State. Something I've said on here before is we've sorely lacked these type of opportunities in the past, and especially at home. Getting Texas at home is such a cool environment for all the PNC goers. The last big-time non-conference opponent was, I believe, like maybe Auburn back in 2019 when Auburn was ranked, and we did win that game. I know we did the the ACC Big Ten Challenge. We played Wisconsin, I believe, back-to-back years. Respectfully, Wisconsin's not moving the needle like a team like Texas does. So Texas is obviously a huge name coming to town. They're ranked every single year. Certainly expect them to be this coming season as well. They have a lot of talent that they've worked through uh, with the portal. So Texas is yet another big name to address here so early in the season. The other half of that, Keats is maybe confident in the roster, but also he's like, all right, well, I just ran through the ACC when nobody thought I could. I just made it to the Final Four when nobody thought I could. Keep bringing on these challenges. Now I want all the smoke. Just keep keep throwing final boss material at me because I want to see how much I can handle at this point in time. I love it. I love it. For Keats and NC State to not only capitalize on the success, but to but continue to raise the program's floor and ceiling, you have to do things like this. You yeah. have to vault yeah. up your non-conference schedule. You have to find ways to improve your resume right off of the bat into these types of seasons. And with all the nonsense that Joe Lenardi puts out about the ACC and their strength of schedule and the the validity of the conference, listen, NC State will have their opportunities, four of which to be exact, right off of the bat in this new season coming off of a Final Four run. So Texas is a huge name to add on to the list, still potentially adding additional names. I know I think we flirted with Marquette. Not sure if that'll get added or not. Auburn is another name I've seen kind of in the shadows. Not sure if that'll materialize or not. But regardless, NC State for sure has four extremely highly touted opponents right off of the bat in this 2024-2025 season. Well, Shaka still probably doesn't want this job after all this time. He just doesn't doesn't want anything to do with being near Raleigh. But with that being said, you know, you, you talk about how coach Keats is doing it. Like I said, he's seeking out hard. He's not seeking out, you know, gentle and comfort and all that. He's seeking out difficulty. That's what he's doing right now. And, you know, you talk about not ducking smoke. He sees the smoke and run towards it like a firefighter because he wants all of it. He wants every team that wants to see his boys. He wants to see them. And that's how you build a great team. Sometimes you'll come out of those with losses. Sometimes you'll come out of the wins but either way this thing shakes out, again, if Coach Keats goes undefeated through this stretch, the way that I'm going to get on here, on this here show, <laughs> yeah. the way that I'm coming full roll, Grayson and I with the stogies to match, <laughs> the way that we are going to be showing our behinds about this one, listen, I – I might have to call up David Locke and tell him send us to Maui the year after that. I, I might have to put in that call. I may have to put in that call because, objectively speaking, this is an extremely difficult, um, difficult stretch. But in the words of DJ Khaled, seems like an opportunity because <laughs> that's what this is. This is an opportunity to show people out the gates we are special, and we're going to talk about the whole fluke thing later because I, I, I'm, I'm really, I'm really starting to get pissed off with some of that talk. But we'll save that. Keep, stick around a little bit, and, and we'll get to it in, in our next segment of coming up here. Kevin Keats wants all the smoke. So do we. We are all about it. Ten toes behind Kevin Keats, scheduling these much harder opponents so early in the season. This is a great opportunity for NC State basketball, and we're anxiously waiting to see how they respond to the challenge. Coming up next, we're getting into a whole lot of nothing or a whole lot of something after a quick word from our sponsors. Our sponsor of today's show is Game Time. Game Time makes getting NBA Finals tickets even faster and easier. Even though the Celtics might shorten up that process by potentially defeating the Mavericks in Game 4, 
prices on the game time app actually go down the closer it gets to tip off. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, game time takes the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets. You can save up to 60% off buying last minute tickets for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and more on game time. You can toggle their all in pricing feature and it shows your total up front so you receive zero surprises at checkout. And you can get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy so you know exactly what to expect upon arrival. So take the guesswork out of buying NBA Finals tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. And again, create an account and use redeem code Locked On College. That's L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E, Locked On College. For $20 off your first purchase. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Middle portion of our Thursday show. Now time for a whole lot of nothing, a whole lot of something. Three topics. We'll tell you exactly where we stand on them. Sticking on the topic of is NC State basketball a fluke? NC State is the only Final Four team excluded from ESPN's way too early top 25. Whole lot of nothing, whole lot of something. It's a whole lot of something, not just because NC State is left out of the top 25, but where the rest of the teams in the in the final four were. There are three other teams, obviously. UConn, the eventual national champions, Alabama, who lost to them, and Purdue, the Boilermakers. Now, let's let's get into that for a second. Alabama, number two overall. UConn, number three overall. Purdue. Number 15 overall. Here's the thing that bothers me so much about this. Here's the thing that pisses me off so much about this. It's not even just a top 25. It's a top 25 plus a best of the rest that includes five teams. Those five teams being um, the Texas Longhorns, Maryland Terrapins, Ohio State Buckeyes, Kentucky Wildcats, Oregon Ducks. Here's my problem with this thought that this was a fluke and that this team isn't good enough and all that good stuff, okay? When are we going to give Keats his credit and respect? If you were a person saying that the roster was built terribly and that's why we failed in the regular season, then you must also give him credit for roster construction success in the postseason. If you were screaming, we don't have set plays and that's why we don't have success in the regular season, you also have to give credit and credence to that style of play winning in the postseason. And to me, if you're going to say, well, it had nothing to do with Keats' coaching, it was the roster. I don't know if y'all know this or not. This is not the NBA. There's no general manager. That's a separate entity from the head coach. All of the players that are here, guess how they got here? Guess who had to say, hey, we're extending that kid an offer. Take a wild guess. One Kevin Keats Sr., okay? So with that in mind, you know, you can say what you want about, oh, this was a fluke and, oh, this was these guys just being special and it had nothing to do with coaching. Again, if it had nothing to do with coaching, then it couldn't have had anything to do with the players. It couldn't have had anything to do with the system. It couldn't have had anything to do with, with the belief and temperament that was instilled in these players despite when times got tough. Because there was times, I'll be wholly honest, I did not believe at all in this team's ability to win an ACC championship, let alone win an ACC championship and go to a Final Four, and yet they did it. So ultimately, I think that it's it's terrible of ESPN to give so much love and credit to teams that have lost just as much, if not more, production than NC State and say, oh, well, all of them are going to be good, but we think that the regular season NC State was really who NC State is. They just got hot at the right time and won nine in a row. All right. It's a slap in the face, whole lot of something. And this team needs to use this as a chip on their shoulder to whoop the wheels out of everybody in front of them going forward. And to be clear, we were two of those people that had various questions about how the team was constructed, how the team Absolutely. was constructed, and how all the execution was in the regular season, rightfully so. It was us amongst many others. Absolutely. That's so important to also then give that credit right back to Kevin Keats in pulling off of a run like that. A rudderless ship 
does not win an ACC championship. A rudderless team does not get to the Final Four. So Kevin Keats and his staff deserves all the credit in the world for pulling off that run and instilling the confidence in that team that they can do that despite how everything went in the regular season. So roster construction had its complaints, but it also had its successes in the same breath. But getting back to the question here, for me it's a whole lot of nothing because I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised that ESPN does not buy into NC State. I'm not surprised that the rest of the country is already doubting NC State and if they can repeat that type of success going into next year. I'm not surprised that people think it was a fluke. It doesn't matter because he did win an ACC championship. He did go to the Final Four, and he did put together yet another very impressive team on paper through the portal. We're we're picking up, was it another top 15 transfer portal class in the country? We looked at the team that just went to the Final Four in the preseason last year, and we said, wow, this team looks very complete. They look very deep. Let's see what they can do. I'm looking at this new team with this new roster, and I'm saying, I think this team might be even more complete than the one that just went to the Final Four. I think that they might be more balanced on both offense and defense. Of course, still a long way to go. We're going to have to see how it does look. But on paper, in my opinion, I think they look even more balanced than they did just a year ago. So I don't really care that the ESPN doesn't put us in the the way too early top 25 we already talked about the the scheduling opportunities that they have so early in the season. We'll know. We'll know what we got probably mid-December. And then once we get into ACC play, that's when we'll obviously really know. But for right now, let everybody sleep. Let everybody think it was a fluke. Let everybody think it'll never happen again for another 32 years. Whatever. With all that being said, though, he is going to have to, I guess, address those allegations very early in the season with this type of scheduling. But for right now... It's a whole lot of nothing. Second one here, some college baseball talk. The 2024 Super Regional round was the most watched Super Regionals since 2009. NC State and Georgia's Game 3 on Monday night gathered 1.2 million viewers. It tied Clemson and Florida's Game 2 for the most watched pre-college World Series game ever. Whole lot of nothing, whole lot of something. Whole lot of something, whole lot of something. The Wolfpack at this point in time are just flexing on these other schools, okay? The Wolfpack at this point in time, we can look around and tell folks, we can tell recruits, you want to boss up your life? All you got to do is get in with me because I'll tell you what, regardless of sport, are we not finding ourselves being one of the most watched teams everywhere? We're not just talking about success, even games that we have not had success in. Last year's bowl game, were we not the most watched bowl outside of the CFP? One of them, yeah. Okay, so this year, outside of the College World Series, we're the most watched game again? Yep. Oh, okay. Uh, in terms of, of what we did with the NCAA tournament, did we not? were we not featured in multiple of the highest viewed games in terms of? I believe it was the highest audience for an Elite Eight game in quite some time as well when we played Duke. Hmm. Hmm. It, it, it almost seems – like NC State is on the precipice of becoming a household name. It almost seems as if we are right there on the cusp of fully becoming. Guess what? You may not like us. You may not like the way we do things. We may be too brash. We may be too uh, too country. We may be too hick. Oh, moo you. Oh, they play old McDonald and all that stuff. Oh, we don't want to see those guys. We hate them. We don't like them. We hate them in their overalls. We hate everything about them. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Like I said, with all this winning we're doing and all of this being viewed that we're doing, right now we still have the white hat. Enjoy it. Embrace it. I'm telling you because I've seen teams go from white hat to black hat. I've been a part of those teams. Enjoy it now. Pretty soon we're going to be the black hat. And that's what I want. That's that's what I live for. When you become the person that everybody's like, they win so much. They're here so much. I'm tired of them. That's what we truly are aiming for. And guess what? We're getting there because time after time after time, when NC State is in the place, when NC State is in the game, all of a sudden a lot of eyeballs flood to it. All I'm saying is, you know, there's a certain young lady in the WNBA that's getting a lot of flack for her effect and how everywhere she goes, people watch and people follow. I'm just saying, old Moo you is seeming similar, ain't it? Oh, that old red and white NC State's having a similar effect to where you keep looking up and saying, the most viewed this, the most viewed that. 
and there's a name, a common name attached to it every time. There's a common name, and that name is NC State. I love it. It's a whole lot of something. You know what's better than playing in a winner-take-all game with 1.2 million viewers? Winning that game with 1.2 million viewers. NC State is repeatedly finding themselves in these situations with the top audience since XYZ or the biggest audience pre-College World Series or the biggest audience whatever. Biggest non-New Year's Six bowl game. Football had a great run to end the year. They end up in the Pop-Tarts Bowl. Talked about how cool it was to have the ball with like the biggest marketing team and the best tweets and the best video, everything that brought in a ton of eyes. And to this day, like for that reason, it kind of stings that we didn't win the pop tarts bowl. I mean, sure. It would have been 10 wins and to win a bowl as something that we haven't had for a while. Sure. But for the sheer fact of a lot of people tuned in for that game, that would have been so big for NC state football to win on, win on that stage. Talk about basketball. The biggest elite eight viewing in I, I can't remember the year, but it was it was pretty significant. It was it was a it was a long time, and to play against Duke definitely helps your case because people are already tuning in to watch Duke lose. That was obviously another massive moment for NC State, and then you get to baseball the the most watched pre college World Series game ever, well tied at least. That's a really big deal. That's a really really big deal. And it just speaks to the level of success that all the NC State athletics have reached in this calendar year. And it it also says something when you're finding multiple sports that are coming back with these types of ratings. Because that means they're playing in those big games in the postseason. That means that they're having enough success to get to a point where you have millions of viewers across the country. And then it also helps that we're winning those games. As well. Absolutely. And you can't emphasize how big of a deal that is in recruiting, brand recognition. We've been talking about a lot of these things to are blue in the face these last couple months, but that is because it seriously is a massive deal. So this is a whole lot of something. For baseball specifically, you also add into the fact that they're going back to Omaha for the first time since all the fiasco in 2021. That's going to be another really big storyline, whether you like it or not, once they get to Omaha this weekend. You can't talk about NC State in this tournament without also talking about what happened the last time that they were there. So that is also going to bring in additional eyeballs when we do take the field. The College World Series is going to bring in big numbers anyway. I expect NC State to probably sit atop of that list of games when those numbers come out because people want to see how NC State responds in Omaha. Across the sporting world, across the country, people are starting to take notice of what NC State is doing. I saw FanDuel, as big of a platform as that is, BetMGM tweeting out, is NC State the best college athletic program in the country? That was a real tweet. And they have like hundreds of thousands, if not millions of followers across social media. That's huge. That is huge for this school. And that's not something that we've ever really been in a position to have before. So you cannot ignore that the NC State brand is undoubtedly going up. After a year like this, in everything, it is undoubtedly going up. So this is a whole lot of something. We're looking for a whole lot more of these types of situations. And if you keep winning, I can promise you the best is yet to come. whole lot of something. And last one here, College World Series specifically, NC State is on the side of the bracket with three SEC teams. And on the other side are three ACC teams. So, Not exactly a whole lot of something, a whole lot of nothing, but more of a question here, Kenton. Would you rather be on the side that NC State is on with Kentucky, Florida, and Texas A&M, or would you have rather been on the other side with ACC teams, including three ACC teams that we've already beaten this year in Florida State, Virginia, and the Dirty Foot Club? In the words of Clean Bandit, when I am with you, there's no place I'd rather be. There is no place that I would rather have NC State be than on the SEC side. And let me tell you why. I despise the saying, it just means more. I despise it with everything in my heart. I really, there are few things that match my contempt for the Dirty Foot Club and the Green Bay Packers. And that saying (laughs) is one of them that is close. It's very much so in the same ballpark as my disdain for those two entities. With that in mind, 
I say that in saying I'm glad NC State is where they are because you've already knocked off one SEC team. Do it again. Do it again. You've already shown you can beat ACC teams. You've already shown that. You already said, go beat these other guys. Oh, you know, the boys in Lexington, they're so special. Oh, yeah. You know, whoever comes out of that other uh, part of Omaha, you know, Grayson, it's two SEC teams now. The Aggies, Grayson, they roll deep. The Aggies roll deep everywhere. All the Gators, they got the best celebration in the business, the chop. You know, they got the best. Oh, man. I'll tell you what. I'm going to say this. Number one, the Aggies are they're weirdos. Objectively speaking, they're weird people. Okay? They're, they're, I, I don't – I'm telling you this right now. It Listen to Bomani Jones talk about Aggies sometimes, and it'll tell you. They are strange people. But Florida, the same thing to make you laugh or make you cry. I saw how you all were laughing at Georgia. I saw – don't worry – don't worry, NC State's got something for all of them. I believe in Avon. I believe in this team. I don't want to beat ACC teams. I don't want to beat teams we already beat. I want the SEC. I don't give a rat's behind. I don't want to take out those ACC teams. Not until it's for all the marbles. I'm with you. I actually love this draw for NC State. We've already beaten two SEC schools in the last two rounds of this tournament. Obviously, you went down to Athens. You beat the dogs in the dog pound in the Super Regional, and then we had the South Carolina Gamecocks come to Raleigh, dispatch them as well. The SEC doesn't scare me. Not with the way that NC State is playing right now. Obviously, we play Kentucky first on Saturday. Don't get me wrong. They're the number two overall seed, but I might be thinking they're a little fraudulent. I mean, the record speaks for itself. They're a really good baseball team. But they don't do anything like exceptionally well. They just play really good team baseball. They find scrappy, gritty ways to win. So that doesn't really scare me because I think NC State can beat them with the bullpen. We can beat them with superior offense and we can advance on. Now, Florida, they have probably the second best player in the country in Jack Caglione. Florida is a team that is probably lucky to even be in the tournament. And obviously, once they get in, now they're hot. So that makes them dangerous in a sense, but Florida is a flawed team that has gotten hot at the right time, and now they're back in Omaha. Texas A&M, another really good team. However, they just lost their best player on their team in the Super Regional when he broke his ankle in Game 1. So they're down a very valuable player. I like this draw for NC State, not only because it's an opportunity to beat another SEC school, but then if NC State does, in fact, get to that championship series, you have a 75% chance of playing an ACC school that you have already beaten this year. Line me up for that. The only team that I really don't want to see is Tennessee. They are the best team left in this tournament. They're the number one overall seed, and I think they're the most complete team. So if another ACC school can knock them out on the other side, give me them. Give me Virginia in the national championship. We went up to their house and beat them twice. I'd feel really good about that. Give me Florida State because we didn't get a chance to win a series against them because they fraudulently did not cover their baseball field with the threat of rain. I would love another shot at the Seminoles. Do I want the Dirty Foot Club in a national championship? I don't know if I could physically survive something. It like would that. feed generations, Grayson. It would feed. I, I would need that series injected into my veins. I would I, need it. Reluctantly, I I don't like eat, regardless of outcome. If we beat the Dirty Foot Club for a national championship, I think I pass away. If we lose <laughs> the Dirty Foot Club in a national championship, I think I also pass away, but in a more painful manner. So I don't know if I could handle that. Obviously, if it comes to that, feed me them dirty feet. That sounded nasty, but you get what I'm saying here. <laughs> okay, I. I love NC State against virtually anyone left in this tournament. Once you get to Omaha, anything can happen. We saw what happened in 2021 before the shenanigans. You took out a really right. good Stanford team, and then you took out a really good Vanderbilt team. Right. The way that this team is playing right now, it doesn't matter what side of the bracket you have them on. I like their chances to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with literally anyone. So I like that we're on the side of the three SEC schools because once we get out of that, you got a good shot at being very familiar with your opponent and potentially the national championship. So I'm happy with our draw here.
Forget lamb chops. I want some ram chops, baby. Get them. I would look, like I said, Grayson, feed generations with that game. I, I'll tell you, oh, oh, I'd love to see it. And rounding out our Thursday episode, we're talking about yet another football commit out of the 2025 class after a quick word from our sponsors. Rounding out our Thursday show, yet another commit out of the 2025 football class, another three-star corner out of Lake Worth, Florida, actually the high school teammate of wide receiver Jamar Browder that just committed over this past weekend. It is Caden Gordon of Lake Worth, Florida. He chooses NC State over Georgia Tech, Illinois, Florida State, Louisville, West Virginia, and many, many others. What does it mean for NC State football to go down into Florida and pick out yet another talented corner out of one of the biggest producers of football players in the country? Not only another talented corner, another talented corner that's above six feet. Ladies and gentlemen, Coach Tony Gibson has an agenda. He has a certain type of build that he likes, okay? And he has gone down and gotten those players to an extreme amount of success. I will tell you what, the reality is very simple. Time and time and time again, we find ways to get the players we need. We find ways to get players who fit our system. We find ways to get players who are something special. Now, I'll tell you this much. You're not just getting one special guy in Browder. You're getting two in Gordon. And think about this. They've been competing against each other for years. They're going to yeah. keep competing. They're going to keep competing. This is going to be a thing where those two are, are going to be locked in together. And everywhere that they go, they're going to be recruiting guys to come to NC State from the great state of Florida, from the Sunshine State together and there's no better feeling there is no better feeling to have that dynamic duo down there uh bringing more talent from florida to nc state you know how many times have we heard about us barely missing out on extremely talented guys from florida and and it was being a situation of you know have we just been pushed a little harder or you know think x y and z happened at the crib that i had to stay but imagine if you had a pair of the most talented guys coming out of a class from the state going to, to nc state yeah, you, you do now. You have it now. What a special time. The recruiting, whoever is recruiting Florida is absolutely crushing it, and I'm loving to see it. Yeah, I just read you the snippet the other day from uh, R.J. Jones' commitment, who is the other cornerback out of Florida, and I believe what he said was, I know NC State is for real because they're going down into Florida and they're getting the job. That's how I know that they're getting some dogs, unquote. As everyone knows, Florida is one of the biggest producers – of D1 football players, I should say P4, P5 football players in the country. Some of the best college football talent comes from the state of Florida. And so for NC State now to be really kind of getting in their bag, getting in the state of Florida's bag as well, and plucking some premier talent out of that state, you got to feel really good about where the future of this program is heading. So Obviously, we talked a lot about fortifying the borders of North Carolina, trying to keep all this in-state talent. But then when you can go down to other states and Florida at that and start plucking out some of their top players, then you're really cooking. So Caden Gordon, six foot one corner, another guy that really has the look of a lot of growth here at NC State. The talent development is obviously our calling card. Caden Gordon fits right into a guy that you could see a whole lot of in a short amount of time once he puts on the red and white. So it is really cool, a, a very cool dynamic that he's the high school teammate of Jamar Browder. Sometimes these guys can be package deals. If they come on their visit at the same time and you're interested in the both of them, sometimes all it takes is one and then boom, now you got both. And for NC State to capitalize on opportunities like that, it goes a really long way, especially this time of the year in the month of June with all these official visits lined up. So yet another recruiting win for NC State. I believe that's now their fourth in the state of Florida, why stop there? We want to take as much talent from other states as we can in addition to trying to keep our own. So big time win for Tony Gibson and the gang. And by the way, not only is this young man from Florida, do you know who 24-7 listed as his top schools who were warm with him as everybody else, including NC State, was cold? I know Florida State was in the mix. So that, that alone is a really big deal. Florida State and USF. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, he just stole one from Norvell. Take a second. Think about that for a bit. You got to win against a team that went undefeated, and when they had their full arsenal, did not lose a game last year. 
and and we're conference champions in your conference. Hey, they are absolutely cooking on the recruiting trail. It circles back to the way that the the nation has their eyeballs on what NC State is doing across the board. And football is always one of the hotter brands at NC State, being that it is the biggest money maker. It gets the most eyeballs and brings in the most revenue. But can't overstate how important that the way that we ended last year was because it, it paid off immediately in the transfer portal. It's paying off in scheduling here in the near future. Now that we're knee deep in high school recruiting because it's summertime, you're still getting dividends off of that progress. So everything continues to come up NC State. In this particular instance, it's really coming up NC State football, plucking another talented recruit out of the state of Florida. Can't imagine he'll be the last one either. I think we're going to start hearing commitments left and right the the longer this month wages on. So Caden Gordon commits to NC State, three-star cornerback out of Lake Worth, Florida. Add him to the bunch. Welcome to the pack, Caden. That'll do it for us here on Thursday. As always, thank you all so much for joining us. Be sure to hit that like button. Drop your comments in the comment box. Tell us what you think about NC State welcoming the Texas Longhorns to PNC Arena this coming December and what that means for the rest of the early non-conference schedule slate. Tell us what you think about NC State baseball's chances in the SEC side of the bracket out in Omaha. All the eyeballs on the NC State baseball program right now, what that means in addition to all the other sports. And the addition of Caden Gordon, three-star cornerback from Lake Worth, Florida, yet another recruit out of the state of Florida that Tony Gibson gets the chance to coach up here at NC State. Thank you all so much for joining us. Be sure to hit that subscribe button as well, and we will see you all tomorrow, hopefully for a bit of a special episode. I've been kind of cooking behind the scenes and getting a special guest or two to talk some NC State baseball. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Hopefully it'll be a good one. Until then, go Pack. Go Pack.